going in with my brown and my white and I'm pulling that down and up. Cover up that background. So I hope you're doing pretty good at home on this. Everybody's painting is gonna look different. It never turns out the same. Every time is gonna be different. Add in some more brown. Kind of pop that out a little bit. And we're almost done with our fence. Gonna keep going. It's our last post here, and we're also gonna go over and finish up those sides like we did before. Just take your brush and go along the side. It just makes our painting really come together when we do that. Now I'm just taking my brush and I'm adding a little bit of white. And you could take the, your black to your more dry places and kind of add that in to make it look like old wood. Yeah, that looks really nice. Pull that down, just very, very lightly. Very lightly with the top of our brush. We're not adding too much black, just a little bit. Now oh, that's a nice fence. Check in the bottom. Okay, so I think I'm done here with my fence and I'm gonna start working on the cat. So we're, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step in shapes to kind of get that cat just how we want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my big brush to the side for now. And I'm gonna go with a smaller brush here. So I have a, like a pointed brush. It's gonna kind of work like a pencil for us so we can get these shapes in order. So what we're gonna do to start our cat is we're gonna start with our crescent moon and that's gonna be our head. So what I mean by this is we're gonna kind of map out where we want our cat to sit and I'm gonna kind of look at my reference here and I'm gonna start by making my half moon. So I made a nice smile and I'm pulling that down. This is gonna be the cat head and I swoop that up and we can always play with that later. We can make his head a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller depending on what we want. But right now we're just kind of sketching so we're not worried about perfection at this point. So here we have our crescent moon, that's the cat's head and we're gonna draw the big eyes. Remember he's got really big glowing eyes. So let's draw two circles on our moon just to kind of see where we're going. All right. Pulling that down a little bit more and we're gonna draw the, the uh, I think I'm gonna actually start down here and work my way back up to the head. So let's see here. I'm gonna draw two eggs. That's kind of like the, the perch of the cat, his feet. And like I said, just kind of sketching out here, not trying to be totally perfect. This is gonna be our genie bottle. So we are pulling that line down and connecting the two. And we have our basic outline for the cat. So now we're gonna kind of color that in with the black. And I'm kind of going in the motion Oh, and I got a little bit of black on my fence, but don't worry. I can always take my brush and pull that down. There we go. Only happy accidents, right? 
So let's color that in. Color in our genie bottle here. And we're gonna work on the tail next. So he's sitting, he's perched up, he's sitting on the fence and he's gonna be looking at the moon. And he also has a little friend who is a little purple spider and he's gonna be hanging off of the kitty's tail. So that part is optional. You don't necessarily have to have a spider hanging off the tail, but he's, also, he's always a fun addition to add. So we're gonna color that in. He's looking really good. So when we're painting, we kind of want to go in the motion of our lines. So I'm kind of going with that, not against it. So I'm curving my line, going up into that smile and around the eyes, doing the ears. And there's many different ways that you can kind of add your own artistic touch to this. You can add glow paint like we did in our firefly painting. You can add stars. There's many different ways to kind of make this painting your own. So keep that in mind. You always kind of want to be a little bit different than the teacher. Okay, he's looking good. It's always nice to kind of step back and take a look at it and see where we're at. All right, now that we have the body and the cat pretty much done here, what we're gonna do is start with the tail. So we want a nice big swirly tail. So I'm keeping my same brush, dipping into the black, kind of finding where I want my tail to go and I'm going to pull that up. And I'm gonna swoop over just to kind of get my basic shape. And now I'm gonna go back over that with the black. Nice steady hand. So you just, you want to paint with confidence because that's when you make mistakes is when you don't have confidence in yourself. So you just want to know that, yes, I can do this and it will take you where you want to go. So I'm just going over that line, thickening up that tail. Very good. I can tell you're doing a good job at home. Let's keep going. And we're gonna kind of taper that tail off towards the end, so it's gonna be a little bit thinner than the rest of our tail. And boom, there we go. At this time, we can kind of go over it and get any lines kind of cleaned up a little bit with our black paint here. Okay, very good. All right. So our next step, guys, is we are going to go into the eyes. So I'm setting that brush aside and I'm getting a clean brush out. And to kind of make those eyes pop out, I'm gonna take some white. Dip in my brush into the white. And I'm gonna swoop over here and kind of color that in where you have that green. Adding a white base layer is going to kind of help those colors pop out more because we have such a dark background here that we wanna make those eyes really glow. So I'm just coloring that in. Very carefully. 
And while that dries, we can get our smallest brush out and we're gonna work on the little um, webbing in the middle of the tail. So <clears throat> I have my smallest brush here. It's a more of like a pointier brush and I'm dipping into the black. And what I'm going to do here is I'm basically gonna make a series of X's. This is how you make a spider web. So I made an X here and I'm gonna pull it up here and you go across. So there's our web here and you can add more if you'd like. So what we're gonna do once you have your crisscrosses, you're going to kind of make some curvy lines. So I'm gonna curve my line here. I'm gonna start from more of the middle, adding a series of curved lines going all the way around, adding more as I start branching out. See, that's cool. Getting some over here. All right, so our spider is going to come down, and I'm going to kind of have him in the center of the tail. So I'm going to pull that line down. And now we have some purple. And I'm just going to kind of dry brush my brush a little bit, get some of that black off because we can use that to our advantage. So we're not really washing our brushes too much in this painting because we want to kind of blend and make those really nice. So I'm going into my purple, adding a little bit of white to that just so he really pops out. So let's make a nice little spider right here. Happy little spider right here. All right. Purple and white. And you can make them as big as you want. And our kitty cat's gonna be kind of looking down at him like, is he a, my new friend or is he something spooky? Very good. So now we're gonna add his little legs, going back into the black here with our small brush. And spiders have eight legs, so we're gonna put four legs on each side. So I'm starting in the front, and I'm just pulling down a line over and down, three and four. Coming over to the other side, making a curved line, and then pulling a line down, two, three and four. Okay, we've got to let our little spider guy dry a little bit before we add his eyes. So we're gonna move back up to our kitty cat over here. So I'm going back to my brush where I used my white and I'm gonna add a little, I'm gonna start with my yellow here. So I'm gonna add some yellow to my brush. And I'm gonna go in a circular motion, starting from the center and kind of radiating outward. And add a little tiny bit of green on the very, very tip of your brush here. Because we want his eyes to kind of be glowing like the moon. Very cool. All right, going back in with that yellow, going over that white. Yeah, add a little bit of green. And pull that with your brush over. I can do that to the other side again. And that'll blend really nicely together. I love that, very cool. OK, 
okay. So his eyes got to dry for a minute and we're going to go back to our spider. Going back to our small brush, we're going to use our little painter's trick for the eyes here. So I'm going to take the back side of my brush and I'm going to pull it, put it into my white. And this is how you're going to make perfect little circles. So spiders have many eyes, so I'm going to give them a bunch of little eyes here. So let's do four on the top and maybe like two underneath. So we just use our white with our white circles. And he's a nice spider, so we're going to give him a little smile. And we're just going to take the bottom part of our brush again, dip back into that black because we're going to give him little pupils. And go ahead and add that in. Very nice. We can even add a little bit of white to our spider web here just to give it some highlight. So I'm going to go over that real quick, just a couple little white highlights there just to make it pop a little bit. All right, it's looking good. Our last piece of this is doing his little eyes kind of looking down at the spider that he has there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep with my small brush and I'm going to go back into my black. Please call the roll. Griffin. Here. Bishop. Here. Conwell. Here. Gray. Here. Hairston. Here. Harsh. Here. House. Here. Jones. Casey. Moore. Here. McCormack. Mooney. Here. Palencic. Santana. 
Slife, Spencer, Starr. You have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you so much. Would everyone rise for a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please dispense with the journal. By Council Member Santana that the reading of the minutes of the last meeting be dispensed with the journal approved, seconded by Council Member Hairston. Thank you so much. We'll now move to public comment. I do want to uh, make sure that I remind all council members to turn their chairs around to face the speakers. And I'd also want to make sure that the speakers uh, adhere to the rules. Uh, please do not make any disparaging comments about any other elected officials. And also, if you are an elected official, we are only here hearing about council matters and please do not promote your candidacy because we will uh, use the gavel to uh, correct you if you do. Thank you so much. First up we have Vincent E. Stokes from Ward 5 and he's here to talk about the honorary street renaming for Anthony Dewan Hughes Jr. Thank you. I am Dr. Vincent E. Stokes II, and I am a teacher in Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Uh, on December 9th, 2020, at approximately 10.45 p.m., I received a phone call from one of my students who was very frantic. And between inaudible moans and cries, they said, he's gone. And I didn't know who was gone. I just answered the phone. Eventually, it got out that one of our other students, Mr. Anthony DeWine Hughes, was murdered. He was murdered walking back from the Boys and Girls Club at uh, King Kennedy, walking back from that at a community event, ironically, about policing, policing in the uh, Ward 5, and he was shot down on 55th. Uh, the next day, I had to sit on Zoom and teach his brother, I mean his cousin rather, his first cousin in English, and I didn't know how to teach a student who's, who just lost a cousin who was just like a brother to them. So I took it upon myself and I began to work with Councilwoman uh, Cleveland and went from Councilwoman Cleveland to Councilwoman Gray and, and then it went to Councilman Starr and I advocated that we have an honorary street rename after Mr. Anthony Dewan Hughes while walking back again from King Kennedy to his home, he was shot 16 times. He was shot 16 times and 16 bullets riddled his body and his life, he had not even lived 16 years. So this would be a great way to honor uh, this young man, a way to honor him. He has a newborn daughter. His daughter will not know the charismatic character of her father. She will not know that he had a smile that could light up a room. But this can be an honorary way for us to honor him and honor his legacy and honor him as a student in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next we have Greg Coleridge. He's from Cleveland Heights and he's here to talk about removing the first energy name from uh, the Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Is Mr. Coleridge around? Is Mr. Coleridge here? Mr. Coleridge is not here. We'll move to uh, Mr. Jeff Crossman. Mr. Crossman is from Parma, and he is here to talk about uh, remove the first energy stadium resolution. Mr. Crossman. Thank you, uh, Council President Griffin, and um, uh, hello, Cleveland City Council members. Thank you for having me here this evening. And while I live in Parma today, uh, I can tell you my roots in Cleveland run deep. I was born in Cleveland, I've lived in Cleveland, and uh, until last year, my father lived in Cleveland before he passed away. Um, and I still have family live in uh, uh, Councilman uh, Harsh's district. So, uh, and I represent Ohio's 15th district, which includes Parma and Ward 13 in Cleveland and sections of Ward 14 and 12. Uh, last year, I sent the Browns a letter asking them to 
remove First Energy's uh, name off the stadium because First Energy admitted to multiple felonies, including bribing the Speaker of the Ohio House of where I serve, and uh, also bribing the PUCO chair. Why is that important? Because that takes money out of the pockets of hardworking Ohioans across the state of Ohio, including our constituents here in the city of Cleveland. We pay for that stadium. Uh, we, we agreed to pay taxes to fund the construction of the stadium. We agreed to pay taxes to fund the operation of the stadium. And I think it's a slap in the face uh, for uh, you know both the Browns and First Energy, frankly, to put out statements saying that, uh, hey, all good, all's good because a couple of executives are out, out, out of the company now playing golf on the golf course at a country club. These are multimillionaires that literally were laughing at people in Ohio uh, when, when it was found out that uh, even the, the, the $500 million illegal rider that they passed had nothing to do with the bribery, uh, that they don't have to repay that to the constituents in the city of Cleveland. Uh, you know, I know what it's like to grow up. I came from very meager beginnings. I know what it's like. Um, every dollar matters, right? I remember going to the refrigerator as a kid and not having food in the refrigerator. So I know what it's like for people to struggle to pay their bills and people to have to make those very difficult decisions on whether they pay their light bill or whether they you know, pay, pay that bill late and pay the uh, gas bill to, to make sure they have heat in the winter or whether they buy food or whether they buy prescription medication. So I know that every dollar matters to everybody in this city. And uh, so that's why I, I take it offense to the fact that uh, First Energy's name, a company that's admitted to multiple felonies, is on our marquee building down here downtown in Cleveland, the Brown Stadium, which we all know and love. I'm a huge Browns fan, uh, so I, I take it as a personal offense that they refuse to remove the name. The Browns could simply sell that name to somebody else, a more reputable company, and still make more money and give us, give us the PR win that we all need here in the city of Cleveland. I don't think we want to be associated whenever we hear Jim Donovan, uh, when we turn on the radio in the fall, we don't want to hear he's from, he's uh, announcing the game from First Energy Stadium. We want to hear that he's announcing the game from Cleveland Brown Stadium and definitely remind people that the Cleveland name of that team is the most important part of that name. And so I urge uh, council uh, to support Councilman Casey's resolution. I applaud him for the courage of bringing it forward. And I would say, don't stop at just this resolution. You have the power and ability and the teeth to do something more uh, uh, powerful to make sure that they actually do change the name. And I uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, we have Brian Sigurds from Warrensville Heights to talk about completing green seats, streets, and he's from the Ohio Environmental Council. Is Mr. Sigurds here? Is Mr. Sigurds here? I don't see Mr. Sigurds. We'll move on to Daniel Gray, and he's from Rocky River, and he's here to talk about the first energy naming rights, and he represents Citizen, Citizens Utilities Board of Ohio. Hi there, I'm going to read because I'm not good at public speaking. So thank you, Chairman and Council, for the time to speak today on Chairman Casey's proposed resolution to remove First Energy's marketing billboards from Cleveland Browns Stadium. My name is Dan Graham, I'm the President of Citizens Utility Board, a pro-clean energy consumer utility watchdog. Additionally, I do speak on my, be my own behalf as a uh, CI ratepayer and long-suffering Browns fan. Citizens Utility Board is committed to ensuring that ratepayer dollars are spent officially, are spent efficiently and appropriately, and we believe that Cleveland Public Power, as a community-owned asset and not subject to the whims of Columbus politics and the PUCO, is of vital significance to the future economic well-being of the city of Cleveland. So I have two points to make in support of, of CM Casey's resolution. One, generally we do not believe it is in the interest of Cleveland CEI ratepayers to be spending millions of dollars to advertise on behalf of a regulated monopoly utility to simply build their brand in the community. This is particularly worrisome since many neighborhoods like uh, Councilman Slifes on West Park have no choice but to purchase their power from CEI. Point two, and probably more specifically and importantly, we do not believe that one of the largest and most prestigious city-owned assets, Cleveland Brown Stadium, should be engaged in marketing relationship with a company that's used rate payer money to attack another city asset, CPP. First Energy has admitted in court to the misuse of corporate funds to influence lawmakers and of having run a dark money political campaign to undermine Cleveland public power. Therefore, we would like to see this relationship be ended in a timely and, if possible, voluntary fashion and allow a non-monopoly and non-Cleveland Public Power competitor to 
bring in that corporate money to replace it. And as a final aside, I'm happy to note that Cleveland Brown Stadium, while branded with First Energy currently, is actually a Cleveland Public Power customer, and hopefully it will continue to be that way long into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Merle T. Johnson, and she's from Cleveland Ward 6, and she's here to talk about Cuyahoga County Juvenile Detention Center and Justice for Our Youth Task Force. Ms. Johnson. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. They treat you like an animal in here. Those disturbing words were said to me during a phone call with a former resident of the Cuyahoga County Juvenile Detention Center. To protect his privacy, I will call him Jamal. When I asked him to evaluate the conditions of his former residence for three months on a scale of one to 10, with 10 representing horrible, he responded eight or nine. When he, he also said, when we're locked in our room, we have to push a bell to go to the bathroom. A lot of times the guards don't answer. We knock and bang on the window in the door and they still don't come. We have to use the bathroom on the floor. When I asked him about doing number two, he responded, you do what you have to do. Sometimes the staff will help you clean it up. Last week, I talked to a detention officer about the dangerous conditions. He said, we are severely understaffed. We don't have the staffing to keep the kids safe. If there's a call for an alert, there's not enough staff to respond. A kid can take a beating with no one to assist. Detention officers are working 70-hour weeks. The morale, morale is so low and the burnout is so serious that they are calling off and the kids get stuck in their rooms. A teacher there told me that last week they only had 10 guards there on one day. That means they don't go to school when they're locked in their rooms. Another detention officer, Mr. Hayes, said a resident was so severely beaten that he was throwing up for three days straight and was finally diagnosed with a concussion. Jamal also shared that the residents are locked up in order to eat and they have 20 minutes. Sometimes the guards take very long lunch breaks and the residents are not released, sometimes for as long as two hours. When I asked him about how he's treated, he said the guards love to say, I like to get physical. Mr. Jones said he had not received any training in years. A former employee I talked to, Ms. Smith, compared the detention center to a slave ship. She also said, no children have died by the grace of God. Mr. Hayes spoke of racism and called the detention center a plantation environment. At another time during Ms. Smith's employment, the residents rebelled because they had been locked in their rooms for long periods of time without recreation opportunities. As a result, they were shackled and handcuffed to go to the restroom. She said the administration should have had staff stand outside the restrooms to prevent further problems. Ms. Smith said at times there was no laundry detergent. At other times, laundry detergent was bought from the dollar store, which caused a number of girls to get a rash. Mr. Jones confirmed that clothes were being washed in plain water without detergent during COVID. Our young people need our help. The Justice for Our Youth Task Force is asking Cleveland City Council to just care. I spoke to the county council recently. I am constantly being told they do not have the authority to do anything. So who does? Who will rescue our children from the oppressive, inhumane conditions at the Cuyahoga County Juvenile Detention Center? The residents may have allegedly committed crimes, but they are still human beings, and they deserve a consistent quality education in a safe, healthy, rehabilitative environment with some hope thrown in for good measure. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Next, we have uh, Keisha Webster. She does not live in Cleveland, but she works for uh, CCA, and she's here to talk about secondary employment with the city of Cleveland. She represents K Webb Tax Company. Is uh, Ms. Webb here? Ms. Webb? Is Ms. Webb here? Okay, I don't see Ms. Webb. Uh, we'll move on. The next person is Jacob Van Sickle. He's from Ward 12, and he's here to talk about completing Green Streets, and he's representing Bike Cleveland. Mr. Van Sickle, please acknowledge your time. Thank you, Council President Griffin and all city council members for the opportunity to speak today in support of the Complete and Green Streets Ordinance. My name is Jacob Van Sickle, and I'm Executive Director of Bike Cleveland. I'm speaking today to give some advanced thanks for passing Ordinance 370-2022, Cleveland's updated Complete and Green Streets Ordinance. This is an ordinance we've been working uh, to pass for three plus years. 
Passing this legislation is, critical, is a critical part of accomplishing Vision Zero as the city is finalizing their strategy to eliminate traffic deaths and serious injuries. It is a critical comp component to the city's climate action plan and addressing impacts of climate change. It's a key policy to hold true to our mayor's commitment to prioritize people over cars. Improving our infrastructure so that there is a network of safe bicycle and pedestrian facilities that serves, serves the needs of users ranging from 8 years old to 80 years old will, old will benefit the health of Clevelanders in many ways. It will reduce traffic-related injuries and fatalities, improve mobility for people who need to get to work, doctor's appointments, or school. It will help us improve air quality, and it will offer active mobility options to encourage physical activity and improved health. On a side note, any council member who would like to join us for a bike ride in their ward to better understand why this ordinance and the improvements it will bring are necessary, please reach out to me and we'd be happy to schedule a ride with you in your ward. And I'm sure Councilman Casey can attest and Councilman Bishop can attest to those rides. I thank you all in advance for supporting this ordinance and would like to give a special thanks to Councilman McCormick for leading this piece of legislation with us over the past two and a half years. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Van Sickle. Next, we have Wanda Davis. She does not live in Cleveland, but she works in Ward 9, and she's here to talk about digital equity and inclusion, and she's representing the Ashbury Senior Computer Community Center. Ms. Davis. Thank you, Council. And I, I was raised in Cleveland, and I went to Cleveland Public School System, so I've been here all my life, and I'm just down the street in East Cleveland. I'm Wanda Davis, the Executive Director of the Ashbury Senior Computer Center, also known as ASC3. I'm a representative in the National Digital Inclusion Alliance, the Greater Cleveland Digital Equity Coalition. I'm working with prominent leaders throughout the city of Cleveland, and I'm working with representatives of our Digital Navigators Program here in Cleveland, Ohio. As a, as a member of this uh, organization, I and my staff has have spent the last 20 years dedicating our passion to educating and assisting seniors navigate the internet, email, communications, and any other form of technology they so desire. Our goal is for self-empowerment. We do this through uh, help and support from many others similar to you, just individuals just willing to donate and assist us throughout. It is my goal to tell you right now about digital equity and inclusion because if we don't achieve digital equity and inclusion, true digital equity and inclusion in, in the city of Cleveland, uh, we will not achieve what we need to do throughout our society. Digital equity and inclusion consists of four major components, each contributing equally to our digital ecosystem. They are internet connectivity, dig devices, digital skills, and tech support, yielding true Broadband is the ultimate goal. Through broadband adoption, we can improve our social, economic, educational, health, and financial readiness needed for Cleveland to become the best connected city in the nation. Once achieved, we'll attract new businesses, investors, and individuals, individuals to come, live, learn, earn, and play in Cleveland. Now we know that the state, the county, and some ISPs, we have one representative here with us this evening, have started to address the internet and with connectivity and devices. But we're lacking way behind when it comes to digital literacy and tech support. I was asking, going to ask also Mayor Bibb if he was in presence, but Cleveland City Council members, the time is now. As you begin to make decisions about DE&I, you must take a closer look at creating the ecosystem where connectivity, devices, digital skills, and tech support are equally supported to achieve this true broadband adoption. This will lead to our mutual goal of being the number one when it comes to assisting our citizens our citizens to become totally self-empowered, to completely and, equal, completely and equally when it comes to applying for jobs, living in the, economy, in the economy, education, socialization, and living healthy and financially well. Most of you know ASC3 and many other organizations have been addressing DE&I on a shoestring budget for 20 years. Time. 
keep, I'm going to let you wrap up. Okay. Wrap up. Okay. You have the opportunity to change this narrative and move Cleveland and our citizens to the forefront of DNI. And most importantly, Cleveland will no longer retain the bleak title of the least connected metropolitan city in the U.S. Thank, Thank you, you Ms. Davis. Last but not least, we have Sharon Grant Burton from Maple Heights to talk about treatment of our youth at the Cuyahoga County Detention Juvenile Detention Center, and she's with Justice for Our Youth Task Force. Okay. Good afternoon, and thank you, uh, Council President and City Council. My name is Sharon Grant Burton. I am a citizen of Cleveland, Ohio, originally. I am a product of Cleveland Public Schools. I am a 10-year Gulf War veteran, having served in the first desert storm. And I came back to Ohio to hear about the inhumane system for our juvenile system. Having a brother that went through this system 30 years ago, I spoke with him and I asked him exactly what changed your mind from then to now. He said there was a correction officer that mentored him and gave him some resources, rehabilitated him so that he went on to get his bachelor's degree in public service and social work. He got a bachelor's degree in psychology. He went on and got a master's from University of Cincinnati in psychology. He said all all it takes, sister, is for the people to care. All it takes, sister, is for somebody to come in with the rehabilitation services that they said they were going to give to our young people. We say that it takes a village to raise a child. I'm looking at the village. I'm looking at the children that are housed in the Cuyahoga Detention Center, and a lot of those children look like my brother. A lot of them may not make Make it like my brother did. And so I'm standing before you as a product of Cleveland Public Schools, as a product growing up in the Glenville area in the 60s during segregation to ask you, as Ms. Johnson said, please care. Partner with us, the Justice for Our Youth Task Force. Invite us to the table so we can help you with some resources and some ideas and suggestions to move forward so our young people that's in the system now do not get bound over and they do not become lifetime residents of the penal system. I beg you, I implore you to help us our youth are truly the future of America. Thank you for your time. That concludes our public comment section. Uh, I'm going to ask the clerk if she could read communications. File number 566-2022. Oath of Office for James D. DeRosa, Director of Mayor's Office of Capital Projects. File number 567, 2022. From Director Mary McNamara, Department of Aging. Notice of acceptance of a grant of $3,500 from Northeast Ohio Public Energy Council to support 2022 Senior Day. File number 592, 2022, from Director Frank Williams, Department of Public Works. Notice of acceptance of an in-kind gift from Boxing Bullies, Inc., of fitness equipment for and refurbishing of the boxing room at Fairfax Neighborhood Resource and Recreation Center, value $35,000 to $40,000. From the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, file number 552, 2022, regarding a stock application at 8502 Quincy Avenue, Ward 6. File number 553, 2022, regarding a new license application at 10325 Lorraine Avenue, Ward 11. File number 554, 2022, regarding an economic development transfer application at Meyer Stores, southwest corner of Cedar Avenue and East 105th Street, Ward 6. File number 555, 2022, regarding a new license application at 15333-35 Waterloo Road, Ward 8. File number 556, 2022, regarding a transfer of location application at 4317 State Road, Ward 13. 
file number 557 2022 regarding a new license application at 1201 East 185th Street Ward 8 file number 558 2022 regarding a transfer of ownership application at 5612 Harvard Avenue Ward 12 file number 559 2022 regarding a transfer of location application at 3182 West 25th Street, Ward 14. File number 560, 2022, regarding a transfer of license application at 3101 West 25th Street, Ward 14. File number 561, 2022, regarding a transfer of ownership application at 3129 West 25th Street, Ward 14. File number 562, 2022, regarding a transfer of ownership application at 5106 Franklin Boulevard, Ward 3. File number 563, 2022, regarding a transfer of ownership application at 127 Public Square, Ward 3. File number 564, 2022, regarding a new license application at 2456 Lakeside Avenue, Ward 7. File number 565, 2022, regarding a new license application at 14651 Lorraine Avenue, Ward 17. File number 624, 2022, regarding an economic development transfer application at 1330 Old River Road, Ward 3. Okay. Uh, condolence resolutions. Resolutions of condolence by Council Member Bishop for Sylvia Benita Martin, by Council Member Gray for Tara Anal Howard Mohammed, by Council Member Polensic for Victor DeGuttis, DeGuttis. Um, resolution of condolence by Council Member Starr for Isaiah Andrews. All right, thank you. Um, I did not hear if council added uh, Bart Wolstein. Did we, uh, could we hold out a number for uh, Bart Wolstein if we could? We'll Scott Wolstein, I apologize. Uh, any other condolence resolutions? Will all council members please rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. Are there any congratulatory resolutions? Resolutions of congratulations by Council Member Santana for Jose Colon, by Council Member Spencer for Cleveland Public Library Waltz Branch uh, groundbreaking, by Council Member Starr for Marvin Conkle. Resolutions of recognition by Council Member House for Brookdale Orchard Memorial Garden, by Council Member Jones for Carlwin Collins, by Council Member Jones for Cleveland Police Patrolmen's Association, by Council Member Jones for the Black Shield Association, by Council Member Jones for the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 8, by Council Member Polensic for Pastor Kyle Early. Thank you. I uh, believe we have. Good. Good. Okay. Believe we have one presentation by uh, Councilman Conwell. If he could uh, bring up the folks from AT and T, um, I'll start out with Councilman Conwell. He wants to bring up Miss Davis and the folks from AT and T. Um, Leon, this is the first time they mess up the mayor's last name, man. What's wrong? The first time. <laughs> so we give you a pass, and then you just got to take it back to P. Sudak and get it right, Leon. Come on up, Mr. Mayor. Everybody. Um, this is dedication, AT&T for our city, um, for the digital equity and inclusion in Greater Cleveland for investing in fiber. And the great, 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 great ward of Glenville community, you guys, and we want to thank you 
for, um, for doing that. And we're going to yield to you because you got to do your speech over again. Did you, where your daughter at? Oh, okay. Yeah, she, she, this young lady was the board president for Cleveland Public Schools for how many years? Eight, six. Yeah. So I'm going to yield to you to do this so we can move forward. You just, all you got to do is repeat your speech again. Well, I won't be able to repeat that. <laughs> but I will say, uh, in, in order for us to address digital equity and inclusion properly, we have to have partners uh, like we have with Tony Costanza, Costanza and AT&T. It wouldn't be possible for ASC3 to com complete its mission or con continue to execute its mission without great partners. Not only did he bring fiber to Glenville community, he brought fiber to the ASC3 Community Center for three years totally free. And he also has donated $50,000 so ASC3 can start a youth center uh, right adjacent to the senior center. We've always been able to address our seniors in that community, but now we'll have the opportunity to address the uh, youth. So with that, we really honestly thank Tony and AT&T for their commitment and dedication to bringing fiber, not only to the Glenville community, but across Cleveland. So thank you, Tony. Tony? <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, speech man. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks, Wanda. I, I came prepared. So a huge thank you to Councilman Conwell, Wanda Davis, and her team at uh, ASC3 for hosting us just over a month ago at, uh, for Black Party as we continue efforts to get those who qualify signed up for ACP access and a laptop device if needed at Wanda Center. From 2019 to 2021, AT&T has invested over $300 million specifically in the Cleveland market. That's good right there. $300 million. $300 million yeah. in the market, that's money. We're focused on addressing access as our fiber network expands in, the, in Glenville and other Cleveland neighborhoods. Addressing affordability with our own low-cost access from AT&T Internet Program and the Federal Affordable Connectivity Program, better known as ACP, that together can bring a family cost for Internet service down to $0, free Internet, if, if they qualify and addressing the need for internet adoption with new digital literacy resources that we've given at Wanda Center. We now have two connected learning centers in Cleveland to help close the digital divide and the homework gap for the CMSD students and adults who need connectivity, resources to build resumes, apply for jobs, and learn how to use the internet. In collaborating with our philanthropic partners, we have also been able to get devices for families who may, be, who may not be able to afford a computer. We were able to team up with the NBA during the All-Star Weekend and get 500 laptops made available to Clevelanders in need of devices. The Black Party events, getting boots on the ground with our door-to-door -door folks and collaborating with digital navigators are some of the things we are focusing, <coughs> excuse me, focusing on getting into neighborhoods to amplify awareness of the work being done to address access, adoption, and affordability concerns. Thank you. Well, we just want to thank AT&T for uh, coming to our community and helping out, uh, giving the youth an opportunity to be able to be in a safe environment and a learning and get a learning exp experience. This is uh, the plaque that we have brought in for AT&T. This is from the councilman and city to AT&T. You know, you know, I mainly I like to stay real, 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 real positive. I want to thank you on behalf of the 375,000 residents in the city of Cleveland. Um, Leon, you'll take this back and you'll get the, uh, the name right and everything, but it's about the children. It's about giving to our residents. It's, to me, it's not about the name. I mainly don't say anything. I sit back and watch and support. He's going to take care of that. But I want you guys to talk with AT&T to help us to help our residents and help our people. We always have to look at the bigger picture of helping the people and put, putting the city first. So that's first thing first. So I want to thank you personally for helping out AT&T and the community. Keep up the good work. Uh, help out some of the other. Uh, matter of fact, I want you to also talk with the, um, 
commission on um, women and see can you help out with that commission too with some funding here. I mean, if you can drop $300 million, you can come out there and help um, to do that, mothers and families together and all these kind of things in our neighborhood, all right? Yes, sir. So thank you, Tony, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank we'll move forward. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, I'm going to bring up Councilman Richard Starr for a presentation. Councilman Richard Starr for a brief presentation. Council members could please open the well for uh, Councilman Starr's guests. Council President, I always want to play with this mic, man. Trying to be funny. <laughs> um, today, today is very, very good day for me. Um, today, you have two young men. It's actually three of them. Um, they go by the boys. Um, these are like my sons, who I love so dearly. But today, I want to congratulate both of them for graduating from Benedictine High School with 3.5 GPA. <laughs> So I know, I know, I know during committees, um, every time we at the table, every time I get a mic in my hand, I speak about the youth, but I want to just show you today that when preparations meet opportunity, they excel. When they came out of the, oh, <laughs> um, when they came out of um, eighth, eighth grade, they were really, really talented. They played on a Muni League football team, the Renegades, in which they placed third in the country as far as teams. Um, they dominated the Senate. They didn't lose, not the, the, not the Senate, but more so the Muni League. Um, they dominated, and when they dominated, they all had 3.0 GPAs. And they were looking to do something after they graduated and um, promotion in eighth grade. So. They were looking for schools. Every Catholic, every private school was searching for this group of young boys that they did not believe in. When they enrolled in Benedictine, that phone ain't stopped ringing. It was they play too much, they little different, all this little stuff. But then they also went through adversity. And I'm just proud of the fact that they graduated top of their class. They've dominated the football. And they both are going to college on Walsh University on a scholarship, Toledo University on a scholarship. Antonio is going with Allegheny. They started out, they were started out real young with me. They started out real young with me, and I'm gonna just read a few language from the resolution um, about Darrell. Darrell is a native of Cleveland, the oldest of four siblings. He was born in Lakia Griggs and Darrell Battlefield Singer and attended Cleveland School of Arts upon promotion. He faced many challenges and continued to pursue his education through the CMSD, and he eventually took off at Benedictine High School. That is Darrell Betterfield. Yeah. Now, I told y'all they went to Benedictine. There was a lot going on. But I want to introduce you to the 70th recipient of Mr. Benedict at, high, at Benedictine High School. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, when you come from the projects like us, a lot of people write you off. But Marvin Conkle, that boy has blossomed and blossomed and got out of that shell, and now he won't tell, stop texting you what he want to do or how he feel. But what I want to introduce you to um, Marvin Conkle, Benedictine High School was founded in 1927 as a member of the Roman Catholic of Cleveland, a private high school for boys serving grades 9 to 12. The title, Mr. Benedictine, is awarded to a senior who demonstrates through his character, scholarship, athleticism, leadership, serving, Christian ethics, his school pride, and is a reflection of the best that Benedictine has to offer.
And, and, and as I close, I want to tell y'all both, I love y'all. There's, there's nothing I would never not do. Um, I'm proud of everything that y'all have grown up to be young males, uh, young adults, and I'm going to be with you through the journey, so I'm gassing up the car. Council members, if y'all want to ride, we can ride all day. Um, I just want to say thank you all for doing all this great work. Continue to be leaders. And coming from the city of Cleveland, CMSD, they say you can't make it anywhere, but they going to school on athletic scholarship. And like I said, 3.5 graduating out of Benedictine. You can't beat that. We have one last presentation. I want to bring up uh, Councilwoman House, and I believe Councilwoman House has a uh, entourage of women that she wants to make sure she acknowledges. So, Councilwoman House, um, I know you have a few of the uh, the black women, and I believe Councilwoman Gray will be joining you. Would members of Council please open up the well for our colleagues' guests? Uh, yes, yeah, so I know that a lot of them are like, who? So if there was a woman who came, or a male who came to support, um, specifically the city council, to support um, Ordinance 373, uh, the creation of the Cleveland Commission on Black Women and Girl, please come forward, please. <clears throat> In front. It, we, we just we um, it's a lot of us around here. But I, I, I would be remiss because we missed the, the deadline uh, for uh, public comments, but people were still eager to come here to show their support for Ordinance 373-2022. Um, and I want you all to look around. It's not just black women. We got some good white women sisters with us, and we got some good fellas with us too. So I want you all to know this is what Cleveland is, and we are people are in support of this ordinance and Councilwoman Gray and myself along with the mayor, Director Woodson, have been working really hard to get this over the, um, the threshold and so I had to stop because tonight going to be long and most of y'all going to be lit, gone by the time we pass it but um, I would be remiss on behalf of Councilwoman Gray and I if we did not thank you all for taking the time out to come and let people see what the support looks like for this legislation and this is only a smidge uh, council president colleagues, but I wanted you all to to see this. So, I just want to thank. I just want to thank. Uh, 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 I just want to thank my fellow colleagues for believing in us and passing this ordinance. Thank you, ladies, for uh, you you know for being so supportive. Thank you. And we'll take one quick group picture as best we can, panoramic style. Our uh, council president. <laughs> Mayor, come on, Mayor. Mayor. It's a big old, big old campaign. Angie promise. And, 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 and Director Woodson, if you don't come on, just come on. Angie, we're Director Woodson. Oh, girl, it's fine. Not just get in the house. We'll, we'll make it work. Yeah, where she go? And yeah. And y'all gonna have to do the panoramic things, please, so we can, so y'all can see all of this fire over here that's gonna be a supporter, okay? You know, you know, can, this I, is can I coordinate something? Can y'all come back here and we come up here on this platform right here so we can get all of y'all back here? Come yeah. over here. Yeah. How about we do that? Let's go back a little bit. Use stairs. all these platforms, use this. Use that. <laughs> come on, sir. Just come on over and walk through. Just let them know. I just want to make sure everybody get in. The yep. Shot. Yeah, I just want to make sure all y'all get in the shot. All right? Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, come on, come on, ladies. Come over here. Oh, whatever. 
Yes, come on through. Come on through. Beautiful ladies. Come on through. Come on through. Come on through. Okay. Mayor Traore, come on, come on through. Hello. All right. A new bird hunt? Can so y'all come on through? Just, yeah. just come on. Where's Mama Ben? You're fine. You could be sick. You could be sick. Girl, you could be sick. Y'all ready? Yep. Y'all ready? Yeah. Two, one, go. Thank you. Last one. Oh, I was looking for Louis. With somebody. I know. <laughs> Jessica, come on. Hold on, we got one more. Jessica. Okay. Mary Louis take a picture. Hold on. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Good. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let me come back when y'all want to. What's up, Adi? How you doing? <laughs> All right, powerful, powerful, powerful. Let's give them another round of applause. I want to commend my colleagues, Councilwoman House and Councilwoman Gray again. They really did a great job. And I also want to commend all of the women on council. I think this is a watershed moment for council, so thank you. <laughs> Madam Clerk, once they clear, we'll go back to first reading. All right, Madam Clerk, first reading emergency ordinances referred for administrative review and committee review. Ordinance 568-2022 by Council Members Mooney, Bishop, and Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to enter into one or more agreements with the Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority to improve roadway curb walls and pedestrian rails under the track and platform bridges over West 117th Street and authorizing payment for the city's cost of the improvement. Ordinance 569-2022 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by departmental request to amend the title in sections 1, 2, and 4 of Ordinance 1026-2021 and to supplement the ordinance by adding new sections 3A relating to public improvement of demolition of various buildings and structures, disposal of, of related debris and materials, restoration of sites, relocation of employees, tenants, and effective facilities, and constructing temporary relocation facilities for the Department of Port Control. Ordinance 570, 2022, by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from the United States Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistance for fiscal year 21, Burn Criminal Justice Initiative Grant, and authorizing the Director to enter into one or more contracts with the Task Force on Violent Crime Charitable Fund DBA Partnership for Safer Cleveland and Case Western Reserve University to implement the grant. Ordinance 571, 2022, by Council Members Conwell and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Health to apply for and accept a grant from the United States Department of Homeland Security for BioWatch program, and authorizing the Director to enter into various written standard purchase and requirement contracts for courier services needed to transport BioWatch sam uh, samples to the Ohio Department of Health for testing. Ordinance 572, 2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to enter into one or more agreements with CHN Housing Partners to administer energy, water, and sewer conservation services to low-income homeowners for the divisions of Water, Water Pollution Control, and Cleveland Public Power Department of Public Utilities for a period up to one year with one option to renew for a period up to one year, exercisable by the Director of Public Utilities. 
Ordinance 573, 2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to enter into one or more requirement contracts without competitive bidding with Business Inc., the Northeast Ohio Regional Representative of various proprietary equipment and services in order to maintain and replace existing components of various chemical feed and related systems for the Division of Water, Department of Public Uti Utilities for a term of two years. <clears throat> Ordinance 574, 2022, by Council Members McCormack, Bishop, and Hairston, by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to enter into a maintenance inspection and repair agreement with and to issue permit to Sherwin-Williams to encroach into, onto, over, and within the public right-of-way of West 3rd Street by constructing, installing, using, and maintaining an overhead pedestrian bridge. Ordinance 575, 2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to exercise the first option to renew a contract with ITRON, Inc. to provide automated meter reading maintenance and services for the Department of Public Utilities. Ordinance 576, 2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to exercise the first option to renew a contract with One Call Concepts Locating Services for locating and, and marking underground utility infrastructure and related activities for the Department of Public Utilities. Ordinance 577-2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, determining the method of making the public improvement of installing electric vehicle charging stations at approximately nine locations and making associated modifications and improvements at various departments of public utilities facilities and authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to enter into one or more public improvement contracts for the making of the improvement. Ordinance 578, 2022, by Council Members Casey, Bishop, and Griffin, by departmental request, authorizing the procurement by one or more requirement contracts for the rental of various types of heavy duty equipment for the divisions of water, Cleveland Public Power, and Water Pollution Control, Department of Public Utilities, and for the Department of Public Works for a period of two years. Ordinance 579, 2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the purchase by one or more requirement contracts of various types of machines and equipment and labor materials and parts needed to repair and or replace machines and equipment for the divisions of water, Cleveland Public Power and Water Pollution Control, Department of Public Utilities for a period of two years. Ordinance 580-2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the purchase by one or more re requirement contracts of labor and materials necessary to test, inspect, maintain, and repair bucket and derrick trucks for the Division of Cleveland Public Power, Department of Public Utilities, for a period of two years. Ordinance 606-2022, by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Safety to apply for and accept a grant from Cleveland Police Foundation for the 4D Cultural Transformation Project. Ordinance 607-2022, by Council Members Conwell, Bishop, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing Director of Public Works to execute a joint use agreement and other required documents to permit the American Lebanese Community Council to construct phase two of improvements at the Lebanese Cultural Gardens and to accept funding from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for this purpose. Ordinance 608-2022 by Council Members Starr, Bishop, Harrison, and Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Directors of Capital Projects or Public Works to enter into agreements with Cuyahoga County for the purpose of accepting funds for the construction of a new city park to be located adjacent to the Central Recreation Center and to authorize the making and accepting of a new East 26th Street, authorizing the Director of Commission and the director and the Commissioner of Purchases and Supplies to enter into one or more agreements 
with Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority providing for the exchange of real properties necessary for the project, determining the method of making the public improvement of constructing the new park, authorizing the Director of Public Works or Capital Projects as appropriate to enter into one or more contracts and to apply for and accept additional grants and gifts for the park. Ordinance 609-2022 by Council Members Jones, Bishop, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing Director of Capital Projects and or City Planning to enter into one or more contracts with DRS-1, LLC, Sankofa Fine Arts Plus, and the Pastimes Supply Company for professional services necessary for the design, production, and installation of multi-yet-to-be-designed public artworks associated with and installed at the new Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Resource and Recreation Center. Ordinance 610-2022 by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, determine the method of making the public improvement of renewing, repairing, and replacing various water mains in 2023 and 24 authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to enter into one or more public improvement contracts for the making of the improvement, and authorizing the Director to apply for and accept one or more gifts, grants, loans, or other funding from public or private entities to implement this ordinance. Ordinance 611-2022 by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request determine the method of making the public improvement of constructing improvements to the Nottingham Water Treatment Plant's intake crib, authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to enter into one or more pub public improvement contracts for the making of the improvement, and applying for and accepting gifts, grants, loans, or other funding from public or private entities to implement this ordinance. Ordinance 612-2022 by Council Members Hairston and Griffin by departmental request to amend sections 363-12, and 3103-09 of the codified ordinances as amended by various ordinances relating to notices of violation. Ordinance 613-2022 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Finance to apply for and accept one or more grants from the cities, from the cities for Financial Empowerment Fund, Inc., for the 2022 Summer Youth Employment Program, and authorizing the Director to enter into one or more contracts with Youth Opportunities Unlimited to implement the grant. Ordinance 614-2022 by Council Members Conwell and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Health to apply for and accept a grant from the Ohio Department of Health for the Title X program, authorizing the Director to charge and accept fees, entering into one or more agreements to receive payments from Medicare, Medicaid, Medicaid HMO, and other third-party insurers, and authorizing contracts with various entities, requirement contracts, and advertising contracts necessary to implement the grant. All right. First reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Ordinance 581-2022 by Council Member McCormack, consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the Pride Martian the Pride March and 5K on June 11, 2022, managed by Hermes Sports and Events. Ordinance 582-2022 by Council Member McCormack, consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the Westside Catholic Center Pancake Run on June 4, 2022. Ordinance 583-2022 by Council Member McCormack, consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the Hermes will run for the will run for the tacos on July 16, 2022. Ordinance 584 2022 by Council Member McCormack consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the Hermes Hofbra Cleveland half marathon 5k and 10k on August 7, 2022. Ordinance 585-2022 by, by Council Member McCormack, consenting and approving the issuance of a permit for the annual Parrothead event on July 23, 2022. 
Ordinance 615, 2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request to amend Section 2 of Ordinance 660, 2020, relating to maintaining control systems and providing proprietary component, components of the SCADA and PCCS equipment for the Department of Public Utilities. Ordinance 616-2022 by Council Members McCormack and Spencer, authorizing the Director of Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with Cleveland Public Theater for the adult educational programming through the use of Wards 3 and 15 casino revenue funds. Ordinance 617-2022 by Council Member Casey, authorizing the Director of Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with Impact Youth Incorporated for the City Youth Basketball Program through the use of Ward 16 Casino Revenue Funds. Ordinance 618-2022 by Council Member Moore, authorizing the Director of Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with Jones Road Family Development for the literacy through the, through, I'm sorry, for the literacy through the arts program through the use of Ward 12 casino revenue funds. Ordinance 619-2022 by Council Member Bishop, authorizing the Director of Department of Economic Development to enter into agreement with KIT LLC for the Fresh Foods Carryout Restaurant Project through the use of Ward 2 casino revenue funds. Ordinance 620-2022 by Council Member Jones, authorizing the Director of Department of Aging to enter into an agreement with Famicos Foundation for the Senior Lawn Care Program through the use of Wart 1 Casino Revenue Funds. Ordinance 621-2022 by Council Members Bishop, McCormack, Griffin, Conwell, Santana, Spencer, and Slife authorizing the Director of Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with Cleveland Public Theater for the Student Theater Enrichment Program through the use of wards 2, 3, 6, 9, 14, 15, and 17 casino revenue funds. Ordinance 622-2022 by Council Member Mooney, authorizing the Director of Department of Community Development to enter into agreement with Westtown Community Development Corporation for the Westtown CDC Housing Stabilization Code Enforcement Program through the use of Ward 11 Casino Revenue Funds. Ordinance 623-2022 by Council Member Casey, authorizing the Director of Department of Community Development to enter into agreement with Bel Air Puritus Development Corporation for the Housing Code Enforcement Program through the use of Ward 16 Casino Revenue Funds. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By Council Member Santana, that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage. Seconded by Council Member Hairston. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 16 yeas. Call the roll on passage. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 16 yeas. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, first reading ordinances referred for administrative review and committee review. Ordinance 586-2022 by Council Member Harsh, mapping a specific building setback along Roanoke Avenue between State Road and West 30th Street. First reading emergency resolution referred for administrative review and committee review and first reading emergency resolutions to be adopted. Resolution 591-2022 by Council Members House and McCormack, supporting Governor Mike DeWine's interest in improving and expanding passenger rail service in Ohio and urging him to participate in the Federal Railroad Administration's new corridor identification and development program to better connect Ohio communities with enhanced intercity passenger rail service. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By council member, I'm sorry. I'm moving too fast. What we got? Okay, so first reading emergency resolutions adopted. To be, yeah, to be adopted. Yeah, I just, okay. 
Resolution 587, 2022 by Councilmember House, objecting to a new D3 and D6 liquor permit at 2456 Lakeside Avenue. Resolution 588, 2022 by Councilmember Griffin, objecting to the transfer of a stock of stock of a C1 liquor permit to 8502 Quincy Avenue. Resolution 589, 2022 by Councilmember Harsh, objecting to the transfer of, of a liquor license of a D3, D3A liquor permit to 4317 State Road. Resolution 590, 2022 by Councilmember Moore, withdrawing objection to the renewal of a C1, C2 liquor permit at 3794 East 71st Street and repealing Resolution 670, 2020, objecting to said renewal. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By Councilmember Santana, that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage, seconded by Councilmember Hairston. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 17 yeas. Call the roll on adoption. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 17 yeas. Second reading emergency ordinances to be passed. Ordinance 702-2020 as amended by Council Members Casey and McCormack to repeal Chapter 170, I'm sorry, 163, Tree Commission Sections 163-01-03 as enacted by Ordinance 204492, and to supplement the, co the codified ordinances by enacting new, cha new Chapter 163, Tree Commission Sections 163.01-04 to, to reestablish the Tree Commission. Ordinance 304 2022 by Council Members Spencer, Bishop, Hairston, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Works to apply for and accept a grant from the National Park Service for the purpose of developing a new city park to be located near the Clark Recreation Center, authorizing the Mayor and the Commissioner purchases and supplies to purchase various property interests, enter into various options to excuse me, to purchase agreements as needed, determining the method of making the public improvement of constructing the new park, authorizing the director of public works or capital projects as appropriate to enter into one or more contracts and to apply for and accept additional grants and gifts for the new park. Ordinance 370-2022 as amended by Council Member McCormack and Mayor Bibb to provide for the evaluation of complete and green streets elements in the city-sponsored transportation projects within the public right-of-way and to repeal Ordinance 798-11 passed September 19, 2011. Ordinance 373-2022 as amended by Mayor Bibb and Council Members Gray and House to supplement the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio by enacting new sections 162, 01, 02, and 03 relating to the creation of the Commission on Black Women and Girls. Ordinance 392-2022 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Port Control to exercise the first option to renew a contract with SP Plus Corporation for the operation of a valet parking service at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. Ordinance 395-2022 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by departmental request authorizing Director of Port Control to enter into a lease agreement with Sky Cafe U.S. for the use and occupancy of space at building number 218 and parking at 5970 Cargo Road at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport for the purpose of operating an in-flight catering and other ancillary catering and related services for the Department of Port Control for a period of five years with five one-year options to renew exercisable through additional legislative authority. Ordinance 402-2022 by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Port Control to employ one or more professional consultants to provide general planning, engineering, and design services for a period of one year with three one-year options to renew, the second of which requires additional legislative authority. 
Ordinance 453-2022 by Council Members Bishop Santana and Griffin by departmental request authorizing Director of Public Works to enter into one or more contracts with Case Western Reserve University to provide a youth summer sports nutrition, health, and life skills development program for 2022 under the National Youth Sports Program sponsored by Case Western Reserve University. Ordinance 456-2022 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request, authorizing Director of Human Resources to enter into one or more contracts with a computer software vendor to provide a, subs a subscription-based or license-based learning management system suite, which will include both a learning management system and a learning content, content management system and related services for a period of one year with three one-year options to renew, exercisable by the Director of Human Resources. Ordinance 490-2022 by Council Members Santana, Bishop, Harrison, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the acquisition and recording of certain standard highway easement interests from the Metro, Metro Health System, a county hospital organized under revised code 339 located in the vicinity of West 25th Street and Scranton Road for the purpose of public roadway improvements in connection with the development of Metro Health's main campus for the Office of Capital Projects. Ordinance 492-2022 as amended by Council Members Hairston and Griffin by departmental request to amend Section 7A of Ordinance 843-2021 relating to appropriating funds from the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 and authorizing various contracts to be executed no later than December 31st, 2024 and funds to be expended by December 31st, 2026 and supplementing the ordinance by adding new section 7B relating to demolitions. Ordinance 494-2022 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request to amend sections 48, 49, and 50 of Ordinance 194-2021 as amended relating to compensation for various classifications. Ordinance 495-2022 by Council Members Starr, Bishop, Harrison, and Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to apply to the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee for state funding for the rehabilitation of a portion of Carnegie Avenue to apply for and accept gifts and grants from various entities for the improvements, authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to enter into contracts and agreements to design and construct the improvements and other agreements necessary to implement the improvements and authorizing the commissioner purchases and supplies to acquire, accept, and record for right-of-way purposes real property and easements necessary to make the improvements. Ordinance 496-2022 by Council Members House, McCormack, Starr, Bishop, Hairston, and Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to apply to the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee for state funding for the rehabilitation of a portion of Payne Avenue to apply for and accept gifts and grants from various entities for the improvements, authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to enter into contracts and agreements to design and construct the improvements and other agreements needed to implement the improvements, and authorizing the Commissioner of Purchases and Supplies to acquire, accept, and record for right-of-way purposes real property and easements necessary to make the improvements. Ordinance 498-2022 by Council Members Bishop Hairston and Griffin by departmental request, giving consent of the City of Cleveland to the Director of Transportation of the State of Ohio for resurfacing a portion of Euclid Avenue, authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to employ one or more professional consultants to design the improvement, to apply for and accept any gifts or grants from any public or private entity authorizing any rel uh, relative agreements and causing payment of the city share to the state for the cost of the improvement. Ordinance 499-2022 by Council Members McCormack and, and Griffin by departmental request 
authorizing director of port control to exercise a third option to renew a contract with TNG Flying Club for the lease of certain city-owned space in terminal building in the terminal building at Burke Lake Front Airport for the operation of a comprehensive flight aircraft rental program and related services for student pilots. Ordinance 500, 2022, by Council Members Gray and Starr to add the name Anthony Dewan Hughes Jr. Way for a secondary and honorary name to East 55th Street between Quincy and Scoville. Ordinance 501, 2022, by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Capital Projects to employ one or more professional consultants and testing firms to perform various construction activities and design projects for roads, bridges, and, and city facilities for a period up to two years. Ordinance 502-2022, by Council Members Gray, Casey, Hairston, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Commissioner purchases and supplies to sell certain city-owned property not needed for public use located in the vicinity of 9103 Buckeye Road to Michelli LaGrosso Development, Corporate, uh, Development Company for purposes of business expansion and proffering certain representations for purposes of the amended and restated trust indenture from the city of Cleveland. Ordinance 509-2022 by Council Members Jones, Bishop, and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the, direct, the Director of Public Works to enter into one or more agreements with the Cuyahoga County Land Reutilization Corporation and or the Cleveland Metropolitan School District relating to the demolition of John F. Kennedy Recreation Center located on the campus of the former John F. Kennedy High School at 17300 Harvard Avenue and authorizing any other agreements needed to implement this ordinance. Ordinance 510-2022 as amended by Council Members Bishop, Harrison, and Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Director of Capital Projects and Director of City Planning to develop guidelines and authorizing the Director of Capital Projects and issue permits for a temporary program for the use of private or public parking lots, streets, and other public rights of way, including on-street parking areas and parklets as outdoor restaurants and or restaurant seating. Ordinance 525-2022 by Council Member Griffin by departmental request to, to make additional appropriations of $7,932,236 to the Special Revenue Fund. Ordinance 528-2022 by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request authorizing Director of public utilities to exercise the first option to renew a contract with Interpersonal Frequency LLC to provide website hosting services for the various divisions of the Department of Public Utilities. Ordinance 529-2022 by Council Members Polensic and Griffin by departmental request authorizing Director of Public Safety to enter into one or more agreements with various colleges, universities, or other entities that provide training and instruction for, vet, for vet, veterinary, veterinary technician or other professions relating to animal care for the city to provide internships or externships to students in exchange for their services at no cost to the city for the Division of Animal Care and Control, Department of Public Safety, for a period not to exceed one year with two options to renew not to exceed one year each, exercisable by the Director of Public Safety. Ordinance 531-2022 by Council Members Hairston and Griffin by departmental request, notifying Council of the final budget allocations received from HUD for the 2022 Community Development Block Grant, Home Investment Partnership Act Grant, Emergency Solutions Grant, and the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS Grant, and to amend Section 3 of Ordinance 120-2022 relating to the grants. Ordinance 
2022 by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, determining the method of making the public improvement of constructing, rehabilitating, renovating, replacing, or otherwise improving recreation facilities, ancillary recreation buildings, and other similar structures on city-owned and city-leased park property, including site improvements and appurtenances, authorizing the Director of Public Works or Capital Projects as appropriate, enter into one or more public improvement contracts for the making of the improvement, enter into one or more professional services and other contracts needed to implement the, the improvement, and to apply for and accept grants and gifts, and authorizing the Director um, authorizing the direct employment of the necessary labor for the Department of Public Works and Office of Capital Projects. Ordinance 533-2022, by Council Members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, determining the method of making the public improvement of constructing, rehabilitating, renovating, replacing, or otherwise improving public facilities, buildings, and other similar structures, including site improvements and appurtenances, and authorizing the Director of Public Works or Capital Projects as appropriate to enter into one or more public improvement contracts for the making of the improvement, enter into one or more professional services and other contracts needed to implement the improvement, to apply for and accept grants and gifts, and authorizing the direct employment of the necessary labor for the Department of Public Works and capital, the Office of Capital Projects. Ordinance 534-2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the Director of Public Utilities to employ one or more professional consultants to host and manage billing systems and related systems and activities for the divisions of water and Cleveland Public Power for a period of one year with four options to renew for additional one-year periods, the second of which is exercisable through additional legislative authority. Ordinance 535, 2022, by Council Members McCormack and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the purchase and or rental by one or more requirement contracts of heavy duty equipment, snow removal equipment, large capacity trucks, other equipment with operators, and any necessary labor, materials, or equipment needed for snow and ice removal for the various divisions of the Department of Port Control for a period of two years with two one-year options to renew, the first of which shall require additional legislative authority. Ordinance 536-2022, by Council Members Casey and Griffin by departmental request, authorizing the purchase by one or more requirement contracts of various sized PVC and FRE duct line materials for the Division of Cleveland Public Power, Department of Public Utilities for a period up to two years. Read the motion to no, suspend. I'm not oh, you got one more? Okay. Ordinance 544-22 by Council Members McCormack, Hairston and Griffin by departmental request authorizing the Director of Economic Development to enter into one or more loan agreements with 2915 Detroit Avenue LLC or its designee to provide economic development assistance to partially finance the acquisition, construction, and renovation of a building located at 2915 for future redevelopment and other associated costs necessary to redevelop the property. Ordinance 5. 45 2022 by Council Member Jones to supplement the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, amending section 55106 as amended by ordinance 149803 related to providing and location of waste containers as amended by ordinance 69710 and section 551-991 as amended by ordinance 974-13 related to penalty and civil infractions. Ordinance 547-2022 as amended by council members Bishop and Griffin by departmental request, determining the method of making the public improvement of constructing material capital repairs and capital improvements to First Energy Stadium, authorizing one or more 
public improvement contracts for the making of the improvement and professional services to design or in the alternative to reimburse or accept the gift of design and other services from the Cleveland Brown Stadium Company, LLC, and for the performance of a capital repair audit of First Energy Stadium. Okay. All right. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By Councilmember Santana, that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage. Seconded by Councilmember Hairston. Call the roll. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 16 yeas. Hold up. We got uh, Councilman Palencic and Councilman Slife and Councilwoman Santana. Mr. Chairman, Madam Clerk, please record me as a no on the 525. Thank you. So Thank you. Noted. Councilman Slife and then Councilwoman Santana. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Or Madam Clerk, could we confirm that 547 was amended uh, as, as the, the final version is amended and has had First Energy Stadium removed from the title in the body? I can read the amendment if you would like. It has um, been amended. Yeah, if, if you don't mind reading it, just so the audience can hear. In the title, line four, and in line 11, in section one, line three, and in section four, line seven, strike First Energy Stadium and insert the, munici the municipally owned facility located at 100 Alfred Lerner Way in all places. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And could you also uh, mark me as a no vote on 545 and 529? So noted. Thank you. All right, call the roll on oh, yeah. Councilwoman yeah. Santana. I just want to make sure that you have recorded a no on 525. Is that so noted. A no? Noted. No, okay. All right, call the roll on passage. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. That's just that's for what was the first one? Five five twenty five. No, no, no. That was for suspending the rules. No. no. Oh, this was okay. On 529-2022, there are 15 yeas, one nay. On 540, um, sorry, 545-2022, there are 14 yeas, three nays. On all others, 17 yeas, no nays. 525, 525, 525, three nays on 525. Yes. We got it. So it should be three no's on 25. It should be 14 to three, and it should be uh, one, on one, on, one on 45, yeah. And one on 29. On 525, it's 14 yeas, three nays. 529, uh, 15 yeas, one nay. On all others, 17 yeas, no nays. All right. All right, thank you. All right, second reading, emergency resolutions to be adopted. Resolution 540-2022 by Councilmember Griffin by departmental request to adopt and declare a tax budget for the City of Cleveland for the year 2023 and submit it to the County Budget Commission as required by state law, Chapter 5705 of the Revised Code. Resolution 541-2022 by Council Members Casey, Palencic, and Harsh calling upon First Energy Corporation to relinquish its name its naming rights to the city's publicly owned football stadium. Read the motion to suspend the rules. By Council Member Santana that the rules be suspended and the legislation just read be placed on final passage. Seconded by Council Member Hairston. Call the roll. 
Griffin, Bishop Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. 17 yeas. Call the roll on adoption. Griffin, Bishop, Conwell, Gray, Hairston, Harsh, House, Jones, Casey, Moore, McCormack, Mooney, Palencic, Santana, Slife, Spencer, Starr. On Resolution 540-2022, 17 yeas, no nays. On Resolution 541-2022, 16 yeas, one nay. Thank you. Uh, we will now move to introductions. Do we have any introductions? Councilman Palencic. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on 541, Resolution 541, that was the Browns, that was the Browns. The Resolution 541, was that the Browns Stadium? Okay, okay, I want to make sure, thank you. All right, all right, are there any introductions? Any introductions? Seeing no introductions, are there any announcements? Any announcements? Seeing no announcements, is there any miscellaneous? Any miscellaneous? Councilman uh, Richard Starr, and then Councilman Kerry McCormick, and Councilwoman House. I'll try to get you in the order that I see you. Please acknowledge your time. Once again, once again, my colleagues, one, this height joke. Um, <laughs> is the mic on? I don't get no mic tonight. Um, <laughs> I'm going to reset your time, Councilman. No, I, I, um, thank you. Um, tonight, I just wanted to rise and, and salute um, Chief Howard. Um, me and I had some communications back and forth over the weekend. Um, we're planning to sit down and discuss some different ways we can collab on some of these issues um, in the community involving juvenile. I commend your leadership, Chief. Um, also, I want to rise and, and speak to something that you heard today from Dr. Stokes. Um, he just gave you a synopsis of some things that go on in our community, but I also want to salute you know, the fact that Anthony Hughes that night when he was leaving the Boys and Girls Club, he was leaving uh, the location that I was a director of. And when he talked about a smile that can light up a room, I'm talking about jokes, basketball, um, kicking it, eating, just a real good kid to, uh, to him just being able to, on his way home, to just be murdered. And, and Dr. Stokes didn't share with you all that this Thursday he would have been 17 years old. And then, if you understand the community, two weeks ago, we all got tagged in a, in a social media post where you see young kids, um, about 13 years old to about 17 years old, on, on, on Cedar Estates, possibly 11 as well, and they all got guns, the same neighborhood he grew up in. So, so I shared it with my colleagues, and that prompted me to reach out to Chief Howard um, to, to, to figure out what we can do to curb this violence. But I am honored that my colleagues are blessing Anthony Hughes with a street named after him for his legacy. And but most important for us to understand that his life was taken too short before he can be able to become a young adult. But I want to honor Dr. Stokes, his entire st teacher staff um, over at Maryland Skirland, um, Ms. Nadine Gray and, and so many others for their work to making sure that we honor him. And I look forward to us being able to celebrate his legacy. And I just want to thank my colleagues, the support of the community and everyone tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I have Councilwoman Stephanie House and then Councilman Kevin Conwell. Thank you so much. Uh, Council President Griffin. Um, so there are a couple of things I'm going to write down. Uh, first, I want to thank all of my colleagues uh, in supporting Ordinance 373-2022, uh, uh, the Cleveland Commission on Black Women's and Girls. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and um, I, I know that uh, the women and girls of Cleveland, black women and girls in Cleveland are up to the task. Um, 
I also uh, want to uh, thank the, the BIP administration um, for being open uh, to partnering with me. Um, you know, uh, Chief Pionta let us know, um, and I guess the governor announced that the city re received over $1.7 million for public safety, um, and it was working in partnership to talk about how we can do um, policing very differently here, and I know I, I will be continuing to push and pride um, because I know there are various ways, um, but I also would encourage encourage my colleagues um, that we all are partners and we should all be looking out for resources and going to the table. We have partners in the administration, also in the county, who people are willing to write grants. And if we put our minds together, we can do really great things. And so I know this is only a little bit of all that we will be doing um, to really creating um, a safe communities. And also I would say a shout out to Di uh, Director Howard, Chief Howard, um, and his team, um, because even in his absence of the um, Interim Chief Drummond and um, Assistant Director Hennessy were very open to listening to me, whether we agreed or not. They were listening. <laughs> they were open to listening to me, and I'm, I'm very grateful um, and looking forward to making sure that we spend money and demonstrate what can be done when we invest definitely in public safety. Um, and then finally, um, I just really wanted to. Um, just take a moment um, to acknowledge the tragic death of uh, the 10 year old child um, who um, was, was killed in Ward 7. Um, uh, it's very tragic. Um, uh, preliminary investigations basically are indicating that it was an accident uh, where a, a gun went off in the house and now a 10 year old is no longer with us. Um, this comes right in the fire on the heels of uh, next week where Ohio will be a free-for-all for everyone. Not being required to have any gun training, but you can have possession of a gun. And so while um, the state of Ohio has made a direction or decisions about what we should be doing when it comes to gun safety, I really will um, challenge us to think about, even despite what the laws may say, to think about how we will continue to lift up the voice um, and and educate our citizens about gun safety, um, how we can think through really getting guns off the streets here in the city of Cleveland, um, and also how we will continue to put together an advocacy strategy, uh, not only in the state, but really on the federal legislation, because this country, this country needs gun safety legislation. We need that. And it is only, it will only help it will only happen if we continue to come together and take our voices um, and real plans uh, to our federal government um, and push and push them to get them to where they am so again um, w you know we have a lot of work to do and I just will you know um, we know we are sending our prayers um, to the family we also know that we have to do some real action to ensure that Clevelanders are safe whether it's accidental shootings whether it's there there's harmful um, gun violence that goes on, whether it's suicides, guns are harmful in a multitude of ways here in Cleveland, and we must take action. Thank you. Councilman Kevin Conwell, and then Councilman Mike Polinsic and Councilman Kerry McCormick. Rise. Mr. President, I was listening to, uh, I'm glad we have these these comments here, and uh, I was, I read your, le your letter several times, um, Todd Letter, Merrill um, Johnson, and this, um, I'm gonna share it with someone later on today about this, this piece here that you mentioned about county council, I'm gonna share it with her. And uh, I don't like what I read there, it, it, it touched me, it, it touched me. And I mentioned to the council president, he said, we're gonna go visit the juvenile detention center there. And I, me, you, Joe, and some of my other colleagues, we have to be there. Because majority of the, when you look at it, these young people, they gotta see. You know what Merrill said, they have to know that we care. And we can't just make a cameo appearance there and show up one time, we gotta get involved. They gotta know that we're watching them and we have to put the light on it. 
Uh, this disturbs me a great deal. We also need to meet with the judges and administrative judges there. And I don't understand this piece about you can't do anything about it. I don't understand that. And we would meet with the judges, and if push come to shove, then we'll go down state. I started to text this to the big guy down state to send a text on it, but I think we'll go through and we'll try to seek to understand. That's the first thing we have to do. And then we'll talk with the judges. And then if we have to go down state to talk with the governor, then we'll do that as, um, as well. If they're living like this, matter of fact, I even heard it, some people, because you know, as you know, Mr. President, I work with youth, sometimes 14 and 15 at a time, and they told me about some of the conditions that you narrated, and you put it in my face, so I, we need to be there, we need to go in June, July, and August, we, meet, we need to make some surprise visits if we have to, if we have to do that. These kids got to know that we're there and we're watching what's going on. And that way we could turn them around. So I want to thank you for making us aware of this, uh, madam. All right. And the other young lady, I didn't catch your name when you narrated. I'll get your letter also and I'll sit down this week and have coffee with you guys, either at my house or we'll go over to Glen Village and we'll discuss this matter so we can put some outcome measures. You know, you gotta walk it like you talk it or we'll lose that beat. So I'm there, this letter touched me. Thank you and I'll get your letter as well. All right. Thank you, Councilman. <laughs> Councilman Mike Polensic and then Councilman Kerry McCormick. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Madam Clerk, Honorable Mayor, my honorable colleagues and the people who are in attendance. First of all, uh, two weeks ago to my colleague, we had mentioned at the safety committee that's going to be one of our planned trips to the juvenile justice center along with some other um, trips we're going to make. So again, I look forward to coordinating that with the council president, you, Kevin, and other members. I wanted to stand up to um, thank my colleague, Councilman Casey, for the resolution on um, what I want, still want to refer to as Cleveland Brown Stadium now referred to as First Energy Stadium. Mr. Chairman, um, as the senior member, I have my office on the north side of City Hall, and every day I look out and I see that name First Energy on that stadium. Stadium that was paid for by the people of the city of Cleveland. We have a company, for as long as I've been in this body, and much longer than that, has gone out of its way to kill our power system former Muni Light, now Cleveland Public Power. It's a documented fact now. They cannot deny it. It came out in the course of the hearings, the court cases. They were involved in a major bribery scheme here. $60 million they paid, and they bribed public officials. Now, I want to remind everybody in this room, because people say, well, what's, what's the big deal? I'll tell you what the big deal is. A member of this body was convicted of running a criminal enterprise out of a Cleveland rec center. I want to say that again. A member of this body was convicted of running a criminal enterprise out of a Cleveland rec center. Within one day, his name was taken off the building. Within one day, that name came off. Because we have a major corporation who has fat checkbooks and has been able to bribe their way throughout the, the state of Ohio and the ratepayers have had to pay the freight for what they've done. Now they want to portray themselves as a great public citizen and they care about the people. When they've tried to kill our power system repeatedly and they've cost us all kind of millions that we've had to suffer as a result of their actions. So for them to keep that name and for us to allow them to keep that name on that building is an absolute insult to the people of the city of Cleveland and the taxpayers. I, I don't take kindly to people who bribe public officials. I want to say that again. They bribe public officials and we're to ignore it? We're just to say, well, they're big and they're powerful and they control Columbus, they control the State House, 
They've controlled it for years through HB6 and their other activities were to ignore it. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm not going to ignore what they've done. Nobody in this room should ignore what they've done. And every chance we should take, we should try to get that name off that building. And if they had any decency, they would take the name off the building. But they don't have any decency because they have fat checkbooks again and they think they can buy people. My brothers and sisters, I want to again thank the majority of members who voted for this. I want to thank Councilman Casey for the action. I want to thank those members who joined on the piece as co-sponsors. And um, we can never tolerate corruption. We can't tolerate it in this body and we can't uh, tolerate it over on Alfred Lerner Way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman McCormick, you have the anchor leg. Oh. Thank you. All right, I'll take about 25 minutes here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the <laughs> Mr. President, I want to start this evening by uh, acknowledging the first leg of this year as uh, a body. Um, I want to thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership. Um, the real uh, backbone of our leadership team, Jasmine Santana, uh, clerk Brett, our clerk team, all of our staff, uh, for a tremendous first January, February, March, April, May, June, six months um, here on Cleveland City Council. Um, I'm going to look past the old farts and look in the back row and just acknowledge, Mr. Chairman, that we have an awesome and dynamic and fresh and smart crop of new members on this council. So I just want to acknowledge them and all of their contributions they've made. Um, Mr. Chair, tonight I also want to um, congratulate Council Members House and Gray on the Cleveland Commission on Black Women and Girls, a critical important step to build a, a really exciting foundation that uh, we've all committed to being um, in solidarity with in support of and behind. Um, Mr. Chair, also there were two uh, important pieces of legislation, actually there's a lot of important legislation tonight, but two that I also want to highlight. The first is the Cleveland Tree Commission. Um, Mr. President, we know that trees are, are critical to our environment, to stormwater runoff, to clean air, to property values, to all the important things as they provide. Councilman Casey and I had this crazy idea like four years ago to resurrect this darn thing. It, it hit the mud. Um, it, its roots were cut out from underneath it. Its leaves were chopped off, whatever you want to say. Uh, so I want to thank you, Mr. President, Mayor Bibb, uh, for believing in bringing this darn thing back. And Fran, I don't know if Fran's here tonight, but thank her too for all of her hard work and the community members that brought that together. Really creating oversight accountability, research, community engagement around our tree canopy is critical. The next thing, Mr. President, um, as was noted, has been one of my babies for many years, um, and this is the Complete and Green Streets Ordinance. I want to thank all of my colleagues for supporting this tonight. Mayor Bibb hasn't signed it yet, but I'm going to hold you to signing that darn thing when it comes to your desk. Um, uh, Mr. President, having a ecosystem of public infrastructure and roads in our communities that are for our residents, that are safe, that support the environment, that better connect neighborhoods, that tear down racist infrastructure that was been, has been built over decades and decades and decades, changing the way that we think about how we build our public right-of-way is critical to the success and the future of the city of Cleveland. And I am so excited, Mr. President, to take a step forward today to build this platform to ensure that the cries of our residents that are that are saying do something about speeding vehicles and cars that are flipping over and hitting houses and hitting children and killing children, uh, small businesses that are saying create a, a more friendly environment for folks to catch a bus to uh, wait outside of our place, transit riders who are saying better connect us to the places we need and want to go. Mr. President, tonight we took a big step forward in making sure that the City of Cleveland is prioritizing that future. And I want to thank every single person that's been involved in that. Bike Cleveland, Jacob Van Sickle, there is no one that was more committed to this work. I don't know if he's still here or not. Is Jacob still here? Jacob, will you stand up, please? I just want to give Jacob Van Sickle a round of applause. 
This guy texted me like every single week for five years asking me the status of this legislation. Um, but no, Mr. President, there have been so many American Heart Association, so many people that have put their fingers on this thing, countless community members. I fundamentally believe that Cleveland will be a safer, more environmentally friendly, more equitable and connected community because of this legislation in the long run. So again, I want to thank the members of the administration. I'm going to watch you sign that darn thing. I've worked too hard for this uh, and really appreciate all the good work that was done. Uh, we had a, a, a marathon of a meeting today, Mr. President, but there was a lot of good, important legislation in that packet. So thank you all. Thank you. And Councilman, I want to commend you. You really did a great job. Um, and this has been your baby. You worked on this ever since I've known you. So I know it's like um, seeing it come to fruition. It's like watching a baby being born. So appreciate it. All right. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Councilman Casey. Thank you, Mr. President. As a father of five, I've seen those babies being born five times. I don't know if I would compare that to this, but I get your point. Mr. President, I want to stand tonight and I want to thank you. You know, I, I introduced um, a resolution that um, put a lot of pressure on some people. Um, and I want to thank you for your support and to my colleagues as well. Um, sometimes doing the right thing isn't always popular. Um, but as we work together as a body, um, this shows that we can get a lot accomplished. And then as I was thinking over the last two weeks, Mr. President, with the media that was reaching out to me and other forces, I thought to myself, what would I talk about on the night that we actually passed the resolution? And then I thought I would get up and talk about the largest bribery scheme in the history of the state of Ohio. And then I said, no. And maybe I'll talk about House Bill 6. And then I thought, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll talk about the $60 million bribery that happened down at the State House. And then I said, pass on that one as well. Maybe the $230 million fine that somebody, was, that somebody paid for the bribery scheme. Now, what about the $1.3 billion bailout at the taxpayers' and ratepayers' expense? And I thought, that's too easy. What about federal indictments? Again, I didn't want to talk about federal indictments. What about the people who funded consumers against deceptive fees that tried to hurt Cleveland public power? I said, no. I'm not even going to talk about those who are supportive in any way, the people or the organization who's responsible for all the aforementioned. And then I thought, well, I got to talk about something. So I went to the organization that we just passed a resolution to, encouraging them to take their name off the stadium. And I looked at the press release that they decided that they were going to put out. And something popped out at me. And it said in their press release that they look forward to continuing as a valued partner with all the communities in which we live and work. And I thought, that's it. So I would hope that they're true to their word. And by doing that, they can start by working with the tenants of 100 Alfred Lerner Way and remove their tainted name from the taxpayer-funded, largest municipally-owned building in the city of Cleveland. Oh, by the way, which is powered by Cleveland Public Power. Mr. President, again, thank you very much for your support on this. To my colleagues, thank you very much. I believe this is the right thing to do, and I appreciate all your support. Thank you. All right, uh, before we end, I just want to just uh, piggyback off of what Councilman McCormick said. Oop, I apologize. We have Deborah Gray who wants to make a comment. Councilwoman Gray, when, please lift up your mic so we could always acknowledge. Yes, that's, that's, why, I down, it. that's okay. why I I just want to say thank you to Angie Anderson that uh, promoted and brought 373 uh, Ordinance Commission to Black Women and Girls to us. And I am proud to be one of the um, Council women to support this. I'm going to thank everyone that supported this ordinance, uh, Mayor Bibb, and also all the women who came down and supported us, and all the women across the nation who's going to be a part of this ordinance as well. So I say thank you and I appreciate your support. 
Thank you, Councilwoman Gray. As we close, and this is the last meeting of uh, our first year on council, six months flies. It was uh, just like yesterday that all of us were getting sworn in. And I just want to say this. I couldn't have a better council to work with. We have a lot of institutional knowledge. Um, I'm not going to start rattling off names, but we have uh, some of the old fogey stogies that really bring on how we've done it for a long time. But then we also have a tremendous amount of young new talent that's at the table that I think has really helped us bring a tremendous amount of balance and, uh, and, 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 and a good perspective on the legislation that we've had in front of us. We've had very huge complex issues in the time that I've been down here, there has been nothing like that tax abatement bill that we had to learn and study and figure out in a short period of time. Dealing with lead and making sure that we leverage those dollars that nobody thought we would ever reach our $99 million goal. And because of the cornerstone legislation that this council put in place and working with the BIB administration, we were able to leverage that money and now have $115 million. To be able to have the Black Women's Commission, the Commission on Black Women, is huge. Um, we've done so much good work in this first, um, first semester of school, uh, but what I want to encourage everyone is, it's never enough. If you're like me, and I thought about Councilwoman House this week, and it was Councilman Conwell the week before, and it was Councilman uh, Harrison and Councilman Polensic before that, and all of us have our turn, even in my ward, in Ward 6, where we had a tragic incident that took place uh, recently. We got to do something about this gun violence. We have to work hard in this council, not just to be on a pedestal, but we have to use this bully pulpit every chance we get. Um, for those of you that are new members, you're in for a treat because tomorrow the real work begins because you won't stop getting calls. Uh, but I encourage everyone to really speak out loud and proud about public safety in this city. And I know that we want, we all have different perspectives on how it should be done. Uh, but if we do nothing else, uh, and I want to echo what Councilman Jones says often, if we do nothing else, we have to give our citizens the perception that they are safe and have a quality of life in our city. Uh, so we've done a good job for the first um, the first half of this year. Uh, this committee is going to be adjourned until the middle of July. Um, but once again, I just want to commend all of you for all the great work, for all of the perseverance that you brought to the table, and keep up the good work. This, uh, Madam Clerk, please excuse the, out, the uh, absences so that we can adjourn the meeting. We don't have any? All right. This council is adjourned to the call of the chair. The next meeting of council will be Wednesday, July the 13th.